If there's one brand in India which is synonymous with personal electric mobility, it's definitely Tata Motors. And if there's one car that comes to your mind when you say EV, it's definitely the Tata Nexon EV. There are over 60,000 Nexon EVs on the road today since its introduction in 2019. Over the years, it got a bigger battery pack and many special editions. But now, there's a new one. This is the 2023 Tata Nexon EV and in this video, we'll be telling you everything about it and I mean literally everything about it. So let's begin. But before we begin, let me tell you one thing that Tata says the 0 to 100 km per hour time of this Nexon EV has improved. So we will be testing it out on our V-Box. So stick till the end. And welcome back to Carwale. I'm Bilal and before we begin our video, let me remind you to subscribe to the Carwale YouTube channel. Uh, if you like this video, which I'm sure you definitely will, hit that like button as well and share it forward as well. Let's begin with the design first. Now when you look at it, the new Nexon EV facelift, uh, it shares a lot of resemblance to the curved EV concept that we saw last year. And in metal, uh, it still looks like it's in a concept stage and that's quite a good thing. Uh, the resemblance to the older Nexon is next to nothing. Compared to the ICE version, you get a sleek LED strip uh, which runs across the nose. And this sleek LED strip, it also has multi-function to it. It has a goodbye and a welcome function, which is a function which is usually seen on more expensive cars. And it also shows charging status, the state of charge uh, when you plug it in. Uh, and it looks pretty brilliant as well. Here's a cool part. Earlier, car buyers used to prefer a lot of chrome on the front of their cars. But now with this minimalistic design, the only chrome you'll find is here on the Tata logo. Now we move lower down and you'll see that the headlamps are integrated just into this small unit. It's a LED projector and it's powerful enough. There's a fog lamp unit housed right beneath it into this overall geometrical design. And if you look closely, there's also an air vent right next to it. It's part of the aerodynamic upgrades that Tata has done. There are overall 13 points that Tata has improved aerodynamically, which they claim that has increased the range, about 2% of it. There are more slats lower down the bumper and they're garnished with a matte chrome finish. Even the lip, it runs across the front fascia. And I would have preferred if these slats uh, would have been illuminated as well. Moving to the side, it's here you'd see the resemblance to the older Nexon EV. Uh, more specifically on this flared wheel arches, both front and rear, and on that C-pillar. Even this belt line which was seen on the older Nexon EV with the prominent contrast teal finish, here it's more subdued. But let's talk about the changes now. This 16-inch alloy wheels that you see here, it's aerodynamically designed uh, and they are wrapped in special MRF tyres which has now lower uh, rolling resistance than before. So this new MRF tyres with this uh, aerodynamically designed wheel, they have uh, contributed to improving the range, say starter. Then you look at the overall silhouette, uh, it's still recognizable as a Nexon. The ground clearance, if you'd notice, is unchanged over the older one. It's still 205 mm. And again, there are changes to the front and the rear, but this is definitely a Tata Nexon EV. Now at the back, I'm a fan of this uh, tail lamp aesthetics of the new Nexon. It connects in the middle and on either side, you have that X factor LED strip. And it's a smoked out finish. And if you notice from the side, it has a sharp crease to it, which looks really nice when you look it up close. Uh, now lower down, you also have this characteristic reflector surround, which was seen on the older Nexon. But here it's slightly redesigned and I love the look of it. More details at the back is this new Nexon EV logo, which runs across the tailgate. More details if you look at the back is there's a hidden wiper here which is taken directly from Tata's luxury brand, the Range Rover and the Land Rover. Uh, it, it is hidden inside this roof spoiler and even this roof spoiler adds a nice uh, touch to this overall stance of the Nexon EV. And 
Tatas are known for Easter eggs. And there's one Easter egg here. There's a tiger right here on the rear windscreen. Now, part of this design update is this redesigned lower bumper. And you'd notice that this black strip here, it's part of the tailgate now instead of a lower bumper. And you go lower down the bumper, you have this four skid plate with diffuser-like elements. You can have the Nexon EV in any of the seven color options. However, the color choices also depends on which variant you're buying. So that's all on the design aspect of the new Nexon EV facelift. How do you like the design? Uh, do let us know your opinion in the comment section below. And if you think the exterior of the Nexon EV is highly revamped, let's check out the interior then. And once on the inside, there are a lot of things to talk about. So let's divide it into four parts. So first, we'll talk about this new infotainment screen and this new digital center console. Then we'll move on to the new steering wheel and the MID or the driver's display, which is all digital now. Third, we'll talk about the uh, features and practicality. And lastly, we'll also talk about the space and comfort. We begin with the screen first. So we saw a similar screen in the Harrier and the Safari Dark Edition as well as the EV Max Dark Edition. But that was a 10.25 inch and this one is bigger. It's 12.3 inch display. You still get that 10.25 but in the mid variant of this Nexon EV facelift. This one in the range dropping version is 12.3 and it is sourced by the same Harman. Uh, now the one in the Dark Edition, it has a all dark theme to it. This one, it's running a green hue. But the touch response, it's good, if not great. The user interface, it's quite user friendly. Uh, you can remember the icons where it is. And Tata has gone a step further to even integrate uh, the newer features, which are the OTA update apps, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, uh, to have the same interface, no matter which app you're using, so that you know that uh, while you're driving, that you know which button is where. Uh, you also get a lot of features in this, including voice commands, then the arcade new feature, as well as controls for the AC and on a JBL sound system. Now this JBL sound system, it has special modes to it. You can uh, choose which mode you want, depending on what kind of music that you're playing. So there's mode for electronic music, there's mode for your podcast. Uh, there's also a silent mode for when there are kids sleeping in the back and you want to listen to the music up front. That brings us to the arcade.ev. Uh, this is basically a uh, app store that you, you usually get on your phone like the Google Play Store here you can download apps uh, through internet but not just any app you can download OTT platforms for example Netflix, Hotstar, Prime and you can watch those videos you can stream those uh, web series or movies while your car is plugged in for a charger so for example I have a, an hour or two wait for, a for the car to be fully charged I'm sitting here I'm watching a movie uh, or streaming my favorite uh, web series not only uh, OTT platform, the uh, Arcade EV also has uh, uh, provision for downloading games. For this uh, particular example we have here, uh, it has a game called BB Racing 2 pre-installed into it. Now the same game is seen on the flat screen at my home and my nephew is a pro at it. So imagine uh, him traveling with me somewhere and we have to uh, wait for the car to be charged and him playing the game on this touch screen. Pretty cool feature, don't you think? It needs to be noted that the streaming is only possible when the car is stationary. Uh, it's a safety precaution that Tata has thought about. The quality of the videos I experienced on the screen was top-notch and it is complemented by a brilliant sounding JBL 9-speaker sound system. In fact, I found myself reducing the volume because the sound was too immersive. The audiophiles uh, would definitely love this piece. But on the flip side, uh, the viewing angle of this like if you're watching an OTT series, the viewing angle is not great. For me, I have a lot of reflection from that side coming onto it. So if I'm playing a video, uh, it won't be very, although it's on, in a high HD quality, I won't be enjoying it very much. Secondly, uh, it doesn't have an inbuilt internet. So if you need to stream anything, you need to use your mobile hotspot or you need to have a special dongle or uh, always placed inside the car to use that internet service. Now moving down from the screen, uh, you have physical buttons here. Now, when I saw it in pictures, I thought it would be in a similar 
panel that you get in the Verna. Now, if you have seen our Verna video, it has a panel with a button on top of it. You press that button and that panel's functionality change. You can press that button for having AC control and then you press that button and it turns into multimedia control. I thought this would be a similar one, but no, there are physical buttons for controlling your AC. Then there's, a, a, you have a button for 360 degree camera, opening a tailgate, even the charging flap, uh, locking the charging flap as well. It, the negative is that this panel, the touch is good, but it, it is made up of piano black finish. So it's prone to uh, getting a lot of fingerprint marks on it. Second, we move on to the steering, the new steering and the new all digital drivers display. Now this two spoke steering, it has a nice leather wrap to it and I like the stitching design to it. Tata says it's inspired by a gaming console because most of the thing inside this cabin is inspired by consumer electronics. And this steering wheel design, I like it. There is an illuminated logo of uh, here, which is segment first, which is never seen in any car before. And Tata has also addressed one issue that people have asked that there is an airbag fitted right inside this steering wheel. And in case of an accident, if the airbag deploys, uh, what happens to this glass panel? But Tata says it's not exactly a glass panel or a panel uh, which won't shatter into many pieces. So, and the airbag, it has a different seam to it. So if it explodes, it would definitely not happen underneath it. So that's uh, one problem solved. I like the buttons on it. It has, it doesn't have that tactile feel to it, but it has good uh, response. It, you feel that the buttons are pressed properly and especially when driving, when you're looking on the road and you have the controls right here on the steering wheel, it really helps. Even the paddle shifters are placed behind. They have good aluminum finish to it. And I love the feel of it. They are used for regeneration. We'll talk about it when we drive the car. And then there's the all digital drivers display. Now, when I first sat in the car, the MID, it looked too far away from me. Uh, similar to the, uh, have, if you have visited a, uh, old uh, multiplex with a screen placed far away from the seats it gave me the same feeling but then when i spent more time with it i really love the overall layout of it it's and the best part of it is the configurability this is a higher spec version so you have many configuration you can move the screen around uh, you can have various display uh, depending on what you want to see and there's a lot to see in it there's a range there's a battery display on either side uh, there is a regeneration seen on the bottom right and if you notice closely there's also a compass on the top left corner now whatever you see here is only offered in the range dropping version of the nexon ev facelift if you go for the mid-spec version the infotainment screen is smaller and even the driver's display it has less configurability and the base variant if you go for uh, the touchscreen and the infotainment is the same one which was offered in a pre-facelift version of the nexon ev now let's move on to the third part and talk about the features on offer over here. Highlight of the features in the new Nexon EV is undoubtedly the V2V and the V2L charging support. Again, limited to the more expensive and the long range version, the V2V, which stands for vehicle to vehicle uh, charging support can charge another EV from the Nexon EV. In fact, it can charge the other EV at speeds of up to 3.3 kilowatt and up to 5 kilowatt for compatible models. And the vehicle to load can power up electrical appliances with a simple attachment. This V2L and V2V is a feature uh, we have only seen in very expensive cars. Offering it in this price range is quite an impressive move from Tata. Other features seen in this range topping version includes a 360 degree camera, a cruise control, a blind spot monitor which displays ORVM's camera projection on the center screen. There's air purifier, ventilated front seats both for driver and the passenger, a wireless charging pad, 9 speaker sound system, split rear seats, an electric sunroof, rain sensing wipers, cooled glove box, auto headlamps, a type C fast charger both for the front seats and for the rear, automatic AC, rear AC vents, 6 airbags as standard, an electronic handbrake in this range topping trim along with all four disc brakes, front parking sensors and Tata's Z-Connect connectivity. There are some elements inside the cabin that has been carried over from the older model such as the door pad design, the steering wheel stocks and the electric adjustment for the ORVMs. 
For variant wise feature distribution, you can visit our website www.carwale.com. Lastly, we come to the space and comfort of this Nexon EV facelift cabin. Now, the underpinnings hasn't changed. It still uses the same platform. Only the top hat has changed. So you still have this narrow center console here. You can't access it. You can't keep your phone in there. Even accessing the uh, ports in it, you have to be very mindful of your hand and you can't do it while driving. Uh, this space could have been better managed if the underpinnings would have changed. Uh, the quality of the material seen here is good, but not great. There are some niggles. For example, this steering wheel, uh, This there are sharp edges to it. When driving, if I'm running my fingers on the edge of the steering wheel, it doesn't feel very nice. Space has never been an issue for the next one since the start. And that has remained true even with this update. Uh, practicality front, you have uh, the center console right here, which is usually associated with cars uh, in a much more premium segment. There's a wireless charger pad right here so you can see your phone, which isn't hidden somewhere, but there's no cup holder here in the center console. The armrest, it has space in it, but it's barely usable for anything practical. It's very narrow and it this charging pad, it does eat up space in the center console. Even the threading here on this armrest, uh, it's not very comfortable to your elbow. I'm rubbing my elbow since the last 50 kilometers I've driven it and the ergonomics or the seating posture hasn't been very perfect. There's good amount of space up front for my frame. There's also adjustable uh, height for the driver. There's sunroof, but very narrow opening for it but it's electrically operated and you can control it through the voice commands as well the seats i would say uh, due to the added bolstering and this leather upholstery the support to the back especially for a broad person like me has been reduced and that's been compromised when you are uh, driving it for a longer distance for a longer period of time you might get uncomfortable you'll keep uh, swiveling around and trying to find that right seating position Lastly, here in the second row, not much has changed. You get this premium feeling leatherette upholstery, which feels nice and premium when you're sitting at the back. I have good amount of headroom thanks to this scooped out roof, uh, but the legroom isn't much here. This seat set to my driving position. Even the under thigh support, not too great, but I'm not complaining because this is an EV. Again, a change in platform could have solved this issue. And as for the convenience, I get a rare AC vent here, a fast charging USB type C, which I can use to charge my laptop. There's a 12 volt uh, port over here and a folding armrest with cup holders. There's also a three point seat belts for all three passengers at the back. And lastly, the boot space at 350 liters hasn't changed much. So that was a lot of talk about the exterior and interior of this updated Nexon EV. Now we are finally behind the wheel, so let's see how it is to drive. Now as I said earlier, this is not a generation change, so the underpinnings and all the mechanicals, it remains more or less unchanged. But Tata says they have changed a few critical things underneath and they have made a lot of difference in the way the Nexon EV drives. Now, what we are driving here is the long range version. It uses a 40.5 40, uh, kilowatt hour battery pack, which was earlier called as the Max. There's also a medium range version. It uses a 30.2 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, which was earlier called as the Prime. Now, this one, it the battery, it powers a motor mounted on a front axle and that produces uh, around 140 horsepower. But the torque figures earlier in the EV Max, it was around 250 Newton meter. But now on paper, this one produces 215 Newton meter. But more importantly, the second generation motor used here is lighter by 20 kgs and it is in a smaller package. It is not only smartly packaged, but it also uses a new algorithm uh, for load management, which is optimized by the data collected from so many EVs, Tata EVs, which are already on the road. But have these changes improved the way the Nexon EV drives? Well, the initial impressions are yes, they have made this Nexon EV uh, much better to drive behind the wheel. It's much smoother, it feels more refined. Let's talk about the new gear selector, which now replaces the crystal dial, which was seen on the Nexon EV Max. This one is a proper joystick-like lever, which has a proper park or P button on the side. And it is also combined with an electronic handbrake on the side. 
and the circular dial for the drive modes is similar and it is placed behind this new gear selector. There are three modes here, there's Eco, City and Sport, the usual one. Now the Eco, the throttle response, it's slightly subdued and then when you move to the, the normal, it feels uh, slightly better to drive. So I'll be driving, if I have this car with me, I'll be driving it mostly in the uh, normal mode. And the sport mode, it increases the uh, throttle response to a, a great extent compared to the normal and the eco. Now talking about the region mode, there are three region mode, actually four, where, where the zero is no region. So there's level one, level two and level three. There is a considerable difference in all three region modes. And when you drive it to in the most extreme uh, level three region mode, uh, it, it won't be called, like I won't call it a one pedal setup, but the the way the uh, region kicks in is really nice and smooth. So I'm on the throttle, uh, I'm doing good uh, 60 to 80 at the city speed or at highway speed. I just let go of the throttle and the car, it starts to shed speed at a really nice pace. It's a very gradual and very progressive braking and that I felt really nice. At city speeds, the region feels nice to use and offers a good braking in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. But it never comes to a complete stop that you'd expect from a proper one-pedal setup. Occasionally, I did experience a slight delay between the system detecting a need for region and the region actually kicking in, resulting in a slight jerk. But that might be an issue with this pre-production car that we are driving here and should be resolved in the road-going model. Moreover, the drivability feels much better than before. The drop and talk is surely not noticeable and the ease of driving, which was already quite convenient before, has just gotten a couple of notches higher. Now, as for the battery depletion, we started early in the morning at 99% and then oh, after doing close to 30 kilometers, I saw 10% drop in the battery. So, which it gives us a 1% for 3 kilometers and for 100%, it equates to around 300 kilometers in a real world driving condition and then we started uh, driving on the highway and uh, we maintained a higher speed and for so far so since morning we are the MID is showing us around 155 watt hour consumption per kilometer once on the highway I also noticed that the NVH level uh, has improved but you can still uh, hear the wind noises at highway speed so around uh, when, when you're approaching three digit speeds there's a good amount of uh, wind noise that is heard inside the cabin. Otherwise, the cabin remains very planned, very very silent and a quiet place to be in, especially when you are spending long hours behind the wheel, be it in the city or when you're doing intercity travels. The battery depletion became much better when we were driving back in the city after returning from a shoot location. The range, which was dropping rapidly due to shoots and trackings and our highway runs, uh, it became steady and even when the battery dropped to as low as 15%, the range depletion was so steady, it didn't give us any range anxiety. The slow speed ride of this updated Nexon EV is now quite impressive. It remains flat and absorbs every bumps and creases without letting anything inside the cabin. We even took it over some beaten path uh, to reach our shoot location and there was no complaint either. The higher ground clearance doing its job really well. Even the highway manners feel like you're sitting in a much more expensive car. The steering, it goes almost three turns lock to lock and has good weight to it. It's not light and lifeless, but has a good progressive feel to it. There's some torque steer, uh, which is present when you go aggressive on the throttle with the steering turned in and the tires are struggling to grip. But you do drive it sedately and the new Nexon EV would give you no reason to complain. Now, Tata claims that the 0 to 100 km per hour time of this Nexon EV long range top spec version is around 8.9 seconds. So, let's not take their word for it and check it out on our V box, shall we? Just over 9 seconds for 0 to 100 kmph is not too off from the claim time. But do note that this is not done in our regular testing conditions. So, we will also be doing it properly on our proving grounds when we get the car back home. Now finally we come to the range and the charging. Now Tata claims that this long range version, which was the max earlier, but now we'll call it long range. It has a claimed range of 465 kilometers. And even the mid range version, 
uh, the claim range has been increased to 325 kilometers. That's an increase of around 10 to 15, per, uh, 15 kilometers for both the models. Now, when we did the car wale range test of the original EV Max, uh, it gave us 308 kilometers from 100% to zero where the battery ran out of charge completely. With this update, Tata claims that the range has been improved by 7%. So when we get the car back home, we will be doing a proper car wale range test and we'll also follow the exact timing, exact route and we'll try to match the original uh, uh, range test to the T and we'll see whether or not that 7% is seen in the real world as well. Finally, the charging. Now there are the usual four methods. There's a 15 ampere plug that's kept in the boot. You can charge it with the 3.3 kilowatt AC as well as the fastest 7.2 kilowatt AC fast charging. And if you are in a hurry, you can also use a 50 kilowatt DC fast charger. Now in the 7.2 kilowatt uh, charger, you would take around five to six hours for 10 to 80 percent. And if you uh, go for the faster 50 kilowatt DC fast charger, the timing would tremendously reduce to under an hour. The new Nexon EV facelift, Tata has definitely gone to town with it. They wanted it to be a game changer and I think they have managed to do it to quite a great extent. It looks fabulous no matter from which angle you look at it, like it's still in a concept stage. And then there are features on offer, both inside and on the outside, and these features are not even offered in cars which are priced twice or thrice the price the new Nexon EV will be launched at. The drivability and the range has also improved thanks to the overall improvement they have done. Uh, but there are a few glitches. These glitches uh, are seen on the new infotainment system, on the driver's display. Even the ergonomics is still not perfect. And there are quality issues of the plastic in some areas. And I personally think Tata has taken a lot of effort to make this Nexon EV a more uh, accomplished product than the older one. And I think if they would have gone a few steps further, They've already changed the motor, but they could have changed the underpinnings to an extent. They could have changed the platform a bit. That would have eliminated the shortcomings the Nexon EV came with due to the older platform. It would have liberated more space on the inside. The ergonomics would have been improved. And the overall, the Nexon EV, both inside and outside, would have undergone a generation change. And with that generation change, it would have justified that newer price tag. The price tag, which I think will be much higher than the car it replaces. When it will be launched on 14th of September, we expect the pricing of this new Nexon EV facelift to be significantly higher than the model it replaces. And therefore, Tata has strategically introduced three versions of it so that there is a model for every car budget. Uh, but the Tata EV at the end of the day is ruling the roost with its uh, electric charge in India. And with this update, it has definitely become undisputed. So that's all from this video. If you liked it, do hit that like button and share it forward to those who's looking to buy a new EV. We have also driven the Nexon with the new turbo petrol engine with a DCT automatic gearbox. So check out the first drive review of it by clicking on the box to your left. And if you are still intrigued about the design of the Nexon EV, do check out our conversation with the Tata's design head by clicking on the box below. That's all from this video. This is Bilal signing off. Until next time.